Hey Dave, Lacalio with Head Games Motorworks. Today we are going to pocket port an EJ25 head, uh, the D casting, and we are going to do combustion chambers. We're going to throw it in the CNC. I'm going to show the digitizing on that, and uh, you're going to get to see it all. So keep watching. All right, guys, so there is EJ, many EJ heads, actually. There is, uh, I think, five or six different castings. It, it, it gets a little crazy. But what we're going to do today is the D casting. The D casting, I don't know what it comes on. Maybe I can put that up here. Um, there is so many of these things that it, it, it kind of bugs me, and I don't really know. But anyway, um, so we're going to pocket port it and pocket porting is, uh, if you're a fan of this channel, you know that it's, uh, porting the area underneath the valve seat and the short side radius. We're going to do that in relation to a, it's going to be a certain percentage of the size of the valve. So, uh, this is not so much as a how to that I've done before. I'm just going to kind of put some music to it. And I'm going to show you what I, what I normally do. Cause we always do it. And then, uh, we're going to get into the combustion chamber. Now, we're not going to make it bigger, but this particular cylinder head I know is very timing sensitive to the tuner on the car. And what we can offer is making it less timing sensitive by blending in all the hot spots in the chamber into the top cut. Now, all the other Subarus don't have this combustion chamber. And this is the only casting that does. And since it does, and we can offer it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pocket port it, we're gonna digitize the pocket port, we're also gonna digitize the combustion chamber, and this way you get our pocket port R package. And um, it's gonna be a killer deal. We're gonna put stock size GSC valve train in it, uh, stock size valves I mean, and we're gonna put a conical spring kit with a GSC S1. All that's to be later, but uh, let me show you the pocket port and then let's get into the chamber. So a quick overview of what you just seen. I'm porting just the bowl area here. Now this is just roughing out. So I'm using the head games. This is the honey badger. The honey badger of burrs is the baddest dude. This takes out material very, very quickly. Now we're not measuring yet. So we're just roughing out. We just want to get the shape. And we use this one because it's the biggest one we can stick in there. And it makes it so you have to shape less. So we use a smaller burr. A lot of times what happens is you use a smaller burr and then you're shaping the whole time, whereas this one is already kind of making the shape. Now, when I did this, I go up here, notice the burr stops. So I've seen on videos, the guys going like this and they're porting all over the damn place. Understand that this is as far as you can go. I don't care what you're doing. This is the natural movement and they keep the natural circle that this is, or it's actually kind of a hat circle, but the only way that you're gonna keep this is by keeping the burr in this space. So if you try to go outside of it, then you are gonna be pushing. And when you push, you're gonna make it oblong. You're, gonna, you're just gonna change the shape and that's not what we're trying to do here. And so you see here, it goes like this, and then you go in the center. You can also witness what I'm talking about right here. You see how both of them basically look the same on the corner here. Now we're going to take out this corner. We're going to make it wider, but you can see how when I blended it into this area, they are exactly the same. So I'm going into this corner because that's where the burr can fit into, but I don't want to do anything over here just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen this corner here, these two corners here or four, however you, however you want to count this. So there's four, four of these here and then we're going to blend all this in and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of change the shape of the turn and we're going to lay it back a little bit and that is going to increase airflow.
So no lie guys, we'd probably be trying to take this little ridge out, but it is actually bigger than the valve seat. So here's the seat here, and they would want to blend this into the valve seat. So you would take out some material here. I can tell you that is a quick way to lose CFM. You're gonna lose airflow taking it out of here because you're gonna make it too big. And in this instance, too small, you know it, too big, everybody knows it because it's just gonna run like a dog with fleas. Time to switch it up and do the exhaust. Keep watching. All right, we're gonna start the exhaust and we're gonna switch it over to the Head Games half inch super spiral burr to rough it out. And we are gonna go back to the double cut burr to blend it all in. Not much to say because you guys already seen the other side, but I just want you to pay attention when you guys are doing this. There is a turn here because this is the dog leg port and it's actually the same over here, but there is a turn right at the, at the short turn and also into the bowl area. And you want to keep this a turn. So if you make this part right here too big, it's going to be a drastic change. So you want to blend this in and you want to take the whole wall over in order to shape this area here. The biggest problem with a Subaru is the short turn. The short turn on the exhaust side is horrendous. And this is where you're going to pick up your biggest airflow gains. Again, you can see where I stopped right at the corner here. And I'm going to widen this corner up here and you want to make this corner into here and you want to blend all this back. So this part right here is going to be blended back into the short side. One thing I forgot to mention is when you guys watched me do the short turns and you seen I pulled from here and I'd blend out. So I never came from this side in. I was always coming from the inside out. And we do that because we want to blend everything and actually make it a turn. When you go this way, you're going to have a tendency to lay it back too far. We don't want to, we want to lay it back, but we don't want to go crazy. All right, now the pocket port's done. Let's check out the chamber.
so let's remember what they looked like and what they look like now. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually CNC this. So we're going to digitize this. So you can see it blends right into the top cut of the valve job. And that's what we want to see. We want it to be very flush. And now we're not necessarily making it bigger, although we kind of are. But once you mill it and any of these new heads or really all these heads, they take at least three thousandths to get them straight again. And or new heads are usually like five thousandths. And that will get the combustion chamber right back to the stock size. But no matter what, we're looking for longevity. We're looking for reliability. We're looking for power. And there is power in the combustion chamber just getting rid of all these hot spots. So now that this is done, we can go to the CNC. I just wanted to mention that this is uh, really more important for the guys who are running pump gas because if you run an E, it doesn't detonate. Uh, although I still think it, it uh, is an advantage to have the chamber done, it's just less of a worry. And if you run E85 all the time, you never have to worry about it. But if you're a pump gas guy, this is the most ultimate mod because you detonate very easily and detonation takes out rings. You know, it, it breaks ring lands, especially in the Subaru. Um, it beats bearings out. It does a lot of ugly stuff and you can, uh, just get rid of that for like three, 400 bucks. And then you don't have to worry about it. It's a supporting mod really for the valve job or the pocket port. Yeah!